If you haven't noticed already, the McDonald Bridge is closing on some nights for construction. This is a huge complex project, so Halifax Harbor Bridges approached us to help explain what's going on. We said we'd give it our best shot. The McDonald Bridge, standing for 60 years, is one of Halifax's most important pieces of infrastructure. It's also pretty iconic. If Godzilla visited Halifax, we're pretty sure it'd be the first item on the menu. Hopefully that's not going to happen anytime soon. But there is a bigger threat to the McDonald Bridge. Old age. The McDonald Bridge was built in 1955, making it older than the Canadian flag, the Beatles, and the moon landing. Now 60 years can do a lot to a bridge. There's corrosion occurring on the top flange of those beams, and we can't get at them to do anything. What's happening is, because the corrosion causes so much force, it actually pushes the grid deck up. As you drive across the bridge, it's quite bumpy now. Eventually, we'll be dealing with something that's just, it goes beyond ride quality, and it gets into the realm of being a real safety issue. Halifax Harbour Bridges has been setting aside toll money for many years to be able to afford this project. This investment in this project is funded to totally by the loony that people are chucking into the tolls. And for good reason. Repairing the bridge is expected to cost about $150 million. That's enough to feed every person in Halifax for an hour a week for an entire year. Oh. Which would be a public health hazard. Thankfully, Halifax Harbour Bridges decided against donairs for everyone. Nothing against Donaires, but Halifax needs the McDonald Bridge to function. This 1.3 kilometer long bridge connects key communities on both sides of the harbor. It's been a major influence on how Halifax has developed over the years. The population of Dartmouth more than doubled just six years after the bridge first connected its shores to Halifax. Today, more than 48,000 crossings happen on a daily basis. The bridge is also the only way for people without vehicles to cross the harbor, other than the ferry. It's really quite a lovely walk. It's clear that the McDonald Bridge is key to how many of us get around the city. We need it to work, and we need it to work well. That also means that closing it will probably disrupt the lives of a lot of people. This presents an interesting challenge to Halifax Harbour Bridges. They've decided to keep the bridge open as much as possible during construction, while providing ways for people to cross the harbour when it's closed. It just wasn't seen as being tenable to actually close the bridge to do the work. We could have done it a lot more easily it would have simplified the analysis, it would have made my life a lot easier if we just closed the bridge, but it would have shut down, it would have made Halifax quite miserable for the time that we had to do that. It's only the second time that uh, this kind of partial closure project has been done in the world on a suspension bridge. The first time was the McDonald's sister bridge, the Lionsgate Bridge in Vancouver. Also quite a lovely bridge. Oh yeah, that's nice. <laughs> anyway, here's an overview. The bridge will be closed to road traffic for construction from Sunday to Thursday nights, from 7 p.m. to 5.30 a.m., with the addition of 12 full weekends. We are able to do a lot of data analysis on our traffic. 7 p.m. is pretty safely past the peak hour, and 5.30 a.m. is pretty safely before the peak hour. So, if you drive across the bridge, you've got a pretty good window of time to use it during the day. But the situation is different for cyclists and pedestrians. Starting on June 29th, they won't be able to use the bridge at all. If we left the sidewalks and the bikeways on, this thing would weigh so much more that we'd have to go to the next size strand jack up, the next size wire rope, and those ones move much more slowly, and we would not have been able to do the replacement overnight. We're at City Hall right now. It's 7 p.m. and the bridge is closed, and we'd like to demonstrate to you some of the different ways of getting across the harbor. We're heading from Halifax's City Hall to Alderney Landing in Dartmouth. Odessa is going to be taking the Halifax Transit Shuttle. Singh is taking her car. 
Byungjin's taking the ferry, and Brendan is going to be explaining how the bridge shuttle works. All right, guys, on your mark, get set, get out of here. They're going to need transit passes. If you usually walk or bike across McDonald Bridge, the Halifax Harbour Bridges are offering a free shuttle. This will run every 20 minutes, 24 hours a day. It's meant to be a temporary means to help cyclists and pedestrians get across the bridge. Each shuttle will be able to hold up to 12 bikes, and they don't technically get released until June 29th, so we're going to have to trust their word on this one. Now, if you usually take the bus across McDonald Bridge, your commute becomes a little more complicated after 6.30 p.m. All buses still run regularly across the McDonald Bridge when it's open between 5.30 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. But once that bridge closes, a shuttle service between Scotia Square and the bridge terminal will come into effect. Basically, any bus that used to cross the bridge before will now stop at the Scotia Square terminal in Halifax and the bridge terminal in Dartmouth. From those terminals, you have to take a shuttle around the McKay Bridge to get to either side of the city. Let's not forget about the ferry service though. In the midst of all the changes that are happening to the ways across the harbour, this is the one method that has not changed at all. In fact, it has gotten better. Service on weekday will now be increased to 15 minutes from 6 p.m. to midnight. Sunday service has gotten better too. Okay, no, not that Sunday service. Service on Sunday will now begin earlier at 6 or 5 in the morning. Now, that's pretty awesome. Guys, you made it. Where's Odessa? <laughs> well, there's how you cross the harbor during the big lift. If that seems a little bit confusing to you, you're right, it is confusing. But there is an app for that. The Big Lift app sends daily notifications about when the bridge is closed, details on what services are available to get across the harbor, and information about construction. At the end of the day, we need to fix the bridge, both to make it stronger and extend its lifespan. It probably still won't be Godzilla-proof, but it'll still get people across the harbor safely, and that's important. We're Planifax, and we hope we bridged some gaps for you today. Thank you.